anything to add, Chuck? Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember hearing you say that you were going to build this, but it was going to be supported by pitch sauna tubes. Yeah, do you know what size those are, the 12 inch sauna tubes? Uh, I was probably going to do the 10 inch. 10 inch, yes. And any of the spoils that come out of the hole, if you can't backfill with that, where's that going? The spoils? I'll take them off property. Same with any excess uh, concrete. Correct. Do you have any intention of um, modifying any of the land around that, or are you just going to drop in those sauna tubes and what's there is going to be basically the same? So no crushed stone underneath, um, no uh, landscape. The only thing way. I could think of is putting some blocks to sure up, you know, certain locations in the middle, patio blocks, and just build them up to give them a more secure footing. So if you have your six sauna tubes in the middle, just running a beam across and securing them with some no crushed stone, no dropping of sand, none of that. I'm trying to visualize what you're saying about the, this um, blocks. So in between the sauna tubes in certain spots. Yes. Some patio blocks just to provide some supports. Some That's stability it. in the middle. How come you can't incorporate some sort of beam between the two sauna tubes so the ground isn't, because you're high on one side and you're low right. on the other. Can't you do a support beam between the two? And I mean, the blocks are loose and there's no foundation under them. It's got to move in. And I would like to see this off the ground so we could get any rain on one side if it needed to go underneath. Right. would do that. So can you... Figure That's out fine. a way to do some sort of support. Sure, I'll just double up the the joist in the middle to just get rid of the potential for springiness in the floor. Yeah, either that or put another sauna tube in the center. Okay. If you were worried about not that. a problem. Do you want to do seven sauna tubes? If you need to do nine, I would have to do nine. So, what are the dimensions of the shelf? Twelve by twenty. Okay, because in the permit in the RDA it says twelve by sixteen. Oh, with the porch. Oh, with the porch. oh yes. okay, okay. With the porch. Right. Gotcha. Dave, any thoughts on this nine sauna tube? Instead of doing nine, I was going to do six and in the middle use some of the existing. I mean, it's the same footprint. Right, just the sauna tube. Make it, <clears throat> instead of framing it across, you could actually cut that 10, 10 down instead of going 12, put a, uh, a double beam in the middle going across the 12 and then frame back to the 10, so you'd have 10 and 10 yeah, rather than 12. Yeah, possible to do six and then with some framing, is this is what yeah. you're saying? You're not even going to eliminate three? I mean, right. you're going to be digging. Put a double two by eights in the middle right. and then cross it with 10. So, no so let's, um, can you draw that out and get it to me? Sure. Whatever that's going to look like and how yep. you're going to support it. So not just not just looking down, but across so I can understand how you're supporting those. I mean, you certainly you could just, you could frame out around, everything's on top of the sauna tubes, right? right. And then just like a deck, just go straight sure. across. But then you'd have to cut that front half. You'd, those sauna tubes would have to be at least grayed at the, at the top of the hill. So you're going to sink them down a little bit. They wouldn't be flush with grade because then you'd it would be, be above sixth. grade by, you know. So how are you going to do it? Just a new plan. Right. Okay. Just for that part. Just for the sauna tubes, though. I mean, that's really that's that's, that's right. really all that's in our. Just the sauna right. tubes and the framing, because how's the framing a conservation issue? Just I just want to the framing is a conservation issue because I want to make sure that you get or it, it, it's going to work, so you don't have to add three more sauna tubes. Okay. So that's that's what I was thinking, because he started out saying he wanted nine. I think it could be done with six. Right. Are there any questions, comments from the public? And if so, um, identify yourself, name, where you live, and direct the, your comments and questions to me. Hearing none, do we want to issue tonight, or do we want, do you think it's necessary to wait for the plan? It's not. Okay. But I have nothing to sign, so you, you can you can close and 
issue at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to close? I move we close. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McCracken. Thank you. Do we typically close um, <coughs> Uh, how about the uh, order of conditions for uh, under new old business because it's not quite 720 which would be the next item and this is uh, order of conditions 270-0684187 Bancroft Ave lot 27 map 308 Riley um, did you folks have a opportunity to review I didn't have any comments. Do you have any? any um, so I apologize. I missed the last meeting. I, the only question, outstanding question I had is, um, I don't think it is, but is this in the Aquifer Protection District? It's not. Okay. So then I don't have any. Mike, did you have a comment on it? Which one was this? Was this the one we got today? Yes. Yeah. And I made yeah. that change. I had a major comment. Okay. A, a two needed to be a three. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do I move the order of conditions for 187 Bancroft Ave? Second. Those in favor? Okay. Yeah, well, you asked to change it, so we'll make it. Okay. waiting period, I guess. Yeah, there's a waiting period. Next door. Thank you. Hmm? Okay, 720. The next item is request for determination of applicability to 2017-7319 Ash Street, Map 12, Lot 17, Colonial Builders. And you can introduce yourself. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Jonathan Schuster. An environmental scientist with Oxbow Associates. I have a handout that represents the, the latest uh, iteration of the plan, the sketch. And I also have a few copies of the as built plan that was faxed to you, Chuck. Like these around here. Oh. 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 Sit down here. Everyone in the house? site on November 2nd of 2016 with my colleague Scott Smyers um, and uh, basically we were investigating wetland resource areas uh, just to orient you this is flipped north-south so we found uh, a bordering vegetative wetland to the southeast here and we hung uh, five flags uh, the project involves the clearing of vegetation uh, along with two trees uh, within the 100 foot buffer zone to that BBW um, there is a single family home which is currently under construction. Uh, one small change um, upon consultation with conservation staff here was that the stairs coming off of this deck are now going to be heading uh, eastward, which is to the left, um, further bringing them away from the uh, buffer zone. <coughs> so we investigated the wetland. When we looked at the property itself, we found a lot of invasive plants. 
We have European buckthorn, we have glossy false buckthorn, we have bittersweet, garlic mustard, uh, multiflora rose, and uh, black locust, among others. So it's kind of a tangle of uh, invasives. Um, as I said, we're going to be removing two trees, uh, one of which is a black locust, which I think uh, the commission can agree is probably a good candidate for removal, um, and that is 12 inches here. Is there a way to make this um, full screen, possibly? There is, and I just can't see where it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And if I didn't mention, I'm uh, representing Colonia Belters and uh, Richard Murray, who is here in attendance. Great. <laughs> right, that, uh, that should suit our purposes. Right, so uh, the 12 inch uh, black locust. Um, one thing I wanted to correct on the site visit yesterday, we had discussed the other tree for removal. Uh, that was in the rear of the property. Um, after the staff left, I uh, went and took a look and, and confirmed it is in fact a, a red maple that's clinging to life. The canopy is about 90% uh, grape and bittersweet, and I looked carefully and there are a few maple leaves, so I just wanted to clarify that it's not dead standing, but it's near that based on uh, choking um, from vines. So in addition to the clearing, we're proposing uh, native shrubs be planted, um, originally 10, but we've increased that now to 14. Uh, seven American hazelnut and seven witch hazel. Uh, that'll be placed within the 50-foot buffer zone, as well as a narrow strip of buffer along the rear of the property. And the rest of this would be converted to lawn. Um, so we think between uh, the removal of the invasives through the creation of the lawn, the native plants uh, erosion control, which will be put um, around the edge of clearing, as you see there, in addition to the, the change of the orientation of the stairs. Uh, we feel there's no net detriment uh, to the wetland resources or wildlife habitat values. Um, we ask for a negative determination. Any questions? Well, we, before we get into that, um, we did have a site visit, and Chuck has been out there previously to take a look at the wetland line. We're not approving the wetland, the location of the wetland at this point. Uh, we usually don't do that with an RDA. Um, we, there is a, a, is it a row of hay bales right, a, right about at the 100 buffer, foot buffer zone going straight across? We didn't walk be, beyond that, but we did observe the 16 inch maple and the 24 inch maple oak that would be kept. And just to the left <coughs> of the black locust, there's this whole very dense area of bitter, uh, bittersweet that is going to be removed. It, it's all kind of a lot of invasives back there. So what they're going to do is remove those invasives, um, create, I, I believe, a lawn, but then provide some natural uh, vegetation along closer to the wetland and then along the very back of the um, um, property line at Chuck's request. Um, and that's about it. Do you have anything to? The one thing I would just add is, you know, as we were standing there at the hay bales and, and probably even just looking from the street, you know, you look back and it looks like, oh, this is a real thick wooded area and we were able to kind of get around to the left and it looks like just 20 or 30 feet beyond that, you can see it probably was previously either a lawn in the past or that's something true, that yeah. was clear. Yeah. And this is something that's just taking some time. I live next door and it was all cleared yeah. at one point. Um, I, could you identify yourself? Oh, I'm sorry, Sandra McLaughlin. I live at 323 Ash Street. Thank you. And at one point it was all clear and it was a lawn. Yeah. Um, up to where my point is that's open, that was all a lawn. So we just can I oh, well wait go ahead. Uh, so that's my my point was just exactly it, it looks like it was at one point it was clear and this is just kind of an area that's been overgrown mm -hmm. after a, a pretty long period of time. So. Um, Chuck, do you have any questions or comments on uh, this? Only the uh, 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 when I was reading the legal notice today, uh, I noticed that it said that the a fence would be installed, and I just wanted to get the final word on that whether a fence was going to be installed on the property line at the back or anywhere, because uh, it's actually currently not in the uh, determination. Yeah, um, well, we could certainly something that uh, we could do. Um, I don't know if uh, Dick has a, a preference 
it's either way. Any other questions from the commission? Um, any questions from the or comments from the neighbors or, or public? Yeah. Sandra McLaughlin, 323 Ash Street. Thank you. Our, our major concern is the neighborhood. My house and the house next door, the, the Andal's home, is just whatever is being removed that it doesn't cause more water to, to us because if you look at the property from my yard, my driveway, it comes down like this. And I've done everything to avoid getting water in my basement and the Yandles in the neck, the neighbor after that, because of the way it dips, they get a lot of water. I mean, just a regular rainstorm, and they have two weeks of water in their yard. And I know because I walk my dog through it. So I'm just concerned, depending on what big big items are being removed, that what's going to suck up the water. You know, is the water just going to all come back down to us? Um, Chuck. On this, I didn't see this, but I don't know what was there before. I, I live in the neighborhood, and I know it was a smaller footprint house, I believe. Do they have any kind of an infiltration uh, for um, stormwater runoff off of the um, roof? I do not know. Uh, Richard, do you know? Did you install an infiltration for those? No. Uh, those no. Would you be amenable to, to doing something that we we typically ask um, developers to do that? They're outside the. That's yeah. true. You're right. Exactly. Outside the hundred. Yes, this is a, uh, kind of a unique situation where the mm -hmm. house is completely You're right. outside, outside the hundred foot, right. even with uh, you know an aggressive line. So the house was able to be built without conservation. <laughs> Question. And your name in Amanda Fitzgerald, 322 Ash Street. My husband and I have only lived at our property for about three years, so we're not familiar with what the previous growth was. But the letter we received said that they're proposing to remove 9,200 square feet. And my question is, how much of that lawn was there before, and how how much of that 9,200 square feet is overgrowth, and how much of it is cutting into previous vegetation that was there before? And he said you lived in the neighborhood, so I don't know. If there's prior plot yeah, but plans. I don't know. I, I walk by it almost <laughs> sure. every day, but I wouldn't be able to go back. But, but you understand it. the nature of my question. Right. Um, but from you, what I see. You went over that, right? What? Um, I thought you said that, and we got testimony from the neighbor saying that the lawn was at least as far as her own lawn. Yeah. Uh, Would you say that was 9,000 square feet? I, I'm, I'm, we were trying to figure out. It said 9,000 square feet from the buffer zone, so I, I believe. Yeah. I mean, how much back of that is 9,000? Well, I don't know. We're not going to play with numbers tonight. 9,100 uh, square feet. Just a lot simply, of big size lot. Simply speaking, I did walk out there with one of the mm -hmm. um, consultants from Oxbow, and I would say that there was, behind that, that um, mound of uh, overgrowth, um, there was open space. To me, it looked like it was um, a lawn back there, but I, I do not think it went all the way. I mean, towards the back, there might have been 10 feet uh, to the back property line that was overgrown, but there was nothing but um, invasives out there. Okay. I mean, there's not a lot of trees. I mean, when you look at that place, it looks like there could be a bunch of trees in there. It was actually just three. Okay. Um, so there's not much value, and the consultant said that. Tonight, he said what he saw on the property when he did his evaluation was that they're, what they're putting there will equal uh, the amount of habitat value throughout that whole place. So, okay. you know, the invasives aren't helping any animal or yeah. bug or bee. So. Thank you. I know you folks do live in kind of a pretty low, wet area, especially yeah, as ash comes and, and turns down onto Brook Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all low and, and very wet, so it is expected that you might have a lot of, you know, high groundwater. S Sandra McLaughlin, Ash Street. Again. You don't have to. Uh, have <laughs> I, I do know that the lawn went and on the left side of the property. If you go back, there's a tree that fell down from his property. Um, 
and it fell down years ago when Nancy was alive, and the lawn went back to at least so far as far as that, just so you, if that's a good size too, where that tree is, and there's they put a tag on it anyways, an orange tag. But I know for sure it went back to at least that because she had someone come in and, and mow the lawn all the time. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Erin Yandel, 329 Ash Street. I just wanted to speak up because I do get a lot of water in, I mean, I get a good amount of water in my basement. Are you on that side or the other opposite side? I'm right, I'm next to Sandra. So it's the new develop, the new, the house, Sandra, and then me. Towards? I'm Brook towards Street. Brook Street. Okay. So I am, um, you know, and even half my yard, it takes, I, I don't, it takes till mid-June to dry out after, that's how wet it is. I have five kids, we have a plate, you know, it's hard enough. So I'm really con worried about, you know, removing anything on that end and what it's going to do to me because I'm on, I'm, She's I'm on, on the, the lower end. end. Is, is there any change to the grading of the lot? No. no. It's basically just removing... Uh, all that woody bittersweet and and you know they're just basically it's going to get seeded in. So so what today is all shaded all day in the future will actually get sun hit again. That's, that's a good point. And also the the 12 inch is a compromised dying red maple, and from what I could see to the left of the uh, what was the 12 inch. That was uh, there's a, black black locust. Locust, a black locust here. Right. Which the rest of that, well. the rest of that is um, unnative invasive species, which we do uh, as a conservation commission, uh, you know, recommend that you remove those. Um, it doesn't provide good habitat, food, anything for the pack of coyotes back there. Yeah. <laughs> you folks hear them a lot? Yeah. <laughs> Nightly. Yeah. They're, they must be right in your yard. Oh, they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right in also yard. deer. Oh, deer. Yeah. yeah, I don't see them Obviously. often. I see deer right <laughs> at the edge of my yard. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. Oh, they need some more things. Deer. One more thing I'll add is that uh, within the native shrub area, if there is a, a pre-existing, you know, a small red maple sapling or a, you know, a small cherry, let's say, I mean, that can be retained as well, especially if, you know, if it adds to the aesthetics and just the habitat mm -hmm. value. Um, so, I mean, we don't, we're not nuking all of this, you know, it's just it's basically removing the invasives and we want to increase the habitat value by adding those. But that, that's only in the planting area? Correct. Okay. So uh, the, Jim Roper Shaw, 316 Ash Street. I think the, the biggest concern out here is what you alluded to was the elevation. If they're putting in more loom, that would uh, disperse, you know, push the water out in the yard. I think that's the big big deal. No, I think we heard that there was no change to the grading. Yeah, I think we heard there's no change to the grading. Yeah. So I think, yeah. So if, if that's the case. Yeah, unfortunately, back in this area, we're only talking about landscaping, and it's just the water's going to be absorbed back there. I mean, most when when I hear people come in and talk about water and water problems, they're associating that with the structure and the house yeah. and all that. But if, if the land is like that, right? And I don't know what the land is like because I <coughs> don't know. Yes, okay, that's but if exactly the land is like that, like. and they make it like this, because you put in more loom, make it make black lawn, you're dispersing a lot of water. Into other people's yards. You've been taking up those roots, right? right? Yes. You got it. You know, put it here. Yeah. You're putting, putting it on the lawn. Water. Somewhat. Yeah, somewhat. somewhat. I mean, it's, it's, it's so where, where does, does, it down? Down does it slope down? Does it slope down on the side where there's more vegetation? Because uh, this is on the left hand beyond. side. It goes just like this. As you go down the street. Left hand side, as we're looking at it now. Mm -hmm. You're looking at straight at the property. Goes just like that. So even if there's a slope, it, water will be absorbed. But you're right, the overland flow, they'll they'll be a little bit there. But they're not changing the grade, so it should be so the it's same. The same type of yard that it was less. before. Yeah. yeah, it should be. And that's what he's presenting here. That it's not going to change. So that's what we're we're hearing at this meeting. And the 
trees is staying? Well, there's two trees, two trees in the front that are staying, and those two with the X's on it are being removed. There's only four trees on the lot, but they're planting, I don't know, 20, 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14 shrubs. High value shrubs. What, what were they? Peach hazel and hazel, American hazel. Yeah. I, I'm Diane Greenleaf. I live with my daughter, Erin Yandel, at 329. I just, um, that looks like de decorative shrubs to me. You know, it doesn't look like the amount of vegetation that's soaking up all of the water that is going to come to our property. It's kind of upsetting. It's, I, don't, I don't think, originally 10, now 14, I don't think that's sufficient to um, make use of at least some water that won't be rolling down the hill. So it's a uh, concern. You want to fill well, that yeah, up? sure. I mean, I, I agree. There is a general contour to the property, you know, heading down towards this wetland. Um, but you have to think just the, the quality of the habitat that's there, and what is the actual, you know, absorptive character of all that bittersweet. And I mean, it's the trees that are there are being choked out, which is something too. If you can see it, like the, the maple you're back here. You're taking the trees also. It's not like you're saving the trees. You're taking the trees also. Right. So. I mean, lawn itself absorbs and transpires. Um, you know, certainly we're removing biomass. We're removing a lot of woody vines. But I think looking at the net picture here, that the removal of invasives, the, the creation of, or basically keeping this area uh, wild, but with, with native shrubs, and that'll grow up. I mean, yes, we're planting, you know, two-foot shrubs, but they'll, you know, they grow bigger over time. They may drown. Pretty, well, it's pretty wet back there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we flagged the wetland um, back here, um, and we observed upland conditions um, throughout this area. And I understand it's wet, and I understand when it rains, you know, water's going to be slopping off in that direction. Um, but you know, we feel that this is a, a sufficient uh, compromise, especially given uh, you know everything we're trying to do with the erosion control during uh, the clearing. You know, before everything is before the lawn is seeded in, you know, there's going to be a barrier there to prevent erosion into the wetland resource area. Um, and, you know, that should be a sufficient amount of shrubs, in, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, I'm willing to hear what the commission has to say on that. Um, I'd just like to add, um, I understand it's invasive species. We don't like that. You know, we want to get rid of that. But obviously, since we have seen deer on our property and the lively coyote population, which we probably don't like either, but there, there is wildlife back there being supported by even invasive species that we don't like. So it's, it's still going to affect that as well. If we Just so that you know that the, that the plants that they are planting, and I did say this before, provide good habitat. Um, I don't know if deer like those to nibble on. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think they do the witch hazel. So, you know, but the the seed is is valuable I right. mean, to birds, uh, to small rodents. I mean, you you yeah. I mean, hopefully they they don't eat them. You know, because we want them to stay there and right. be producing and provide, seed and be yeah. good hap, You know, bird habitat. Lots of birds. And when you have birds. You have you know other critters too. That you know, uh, it's. I, I think that there's a real. Uh, that benefit there and you know I think trying to create some kind of a wonderland for deer you know I mean they'll they'll eat what you know they'll eat if you put a tasty plant there they're, they're gonna eat it you know but uh, I, I I think that those are two well suited uh, species uh, to be planted in that area I have a question on the choice of species why American hazelnut compared to some other species is there anything comparable that's not in the hazelnut family um, well, sure. I don't know where you're going with yeah. that People question. with tree nut allergies. <laughs> I hope they're not out there grazing. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah, hazelnuts do provide, yeah, I, that's way beyond our. Mm. I'm just curious if there's, I mean, you're an environmental scientist, so I'm just curious if there's another species that's comparable to the any, hazelnut. Is there anyone in the neighborhood that has a uh, tree nut allergy? <laughs> that makes, I, I've never that makes a lot of <laughs> That's why I asked, yeah. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so. 
Not that I'm going to be, you know, munching off their trees, but. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I mean, if, I, if it would be a danger if you were doing wild foraging on on the property itself. I mean, I. No, but I, I mean, it's it, you know, it's in the air. The it's, it's, pol yes, pol the pollen would be. I mean, the tree pollen is an issue anyway, but right. hazel. Uh, I, I, I really, I really think we're we're out of line. Right. No, no, I'm, I was just curious if there was another well, species. It's a very there, 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 compelling a, question. There's, I've, there's, yeah. there's a list of species that are eligible on our website. Of native, sure. Native plants. Yeah. Um, we don't tell applicants what to plant. Okay. We look at whether what they've proposed meets the guidelines of the commission and this does. That's fair enough. That's a fair enough answer. Thank you. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion for a negative determination. Do I hear a second? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I have something to say. We have to make a few changes to this. Do you want to do it? Yeah, I have to What were the changes, Chuck? Oh, okay. Oh. No, it's just right. that my question was. Under advisement? Uh, you must have heard from somebody. Why wouldn't they take a negative determination uh, into the legal notes? I don't know. I, I didn't see it in uh, any of the paperwork. Uh, I, I, I can tell you what we're doing. With that came, you and I had a, a conversation on the phone where, where we were discussing mm -hmm. some but possible not, changes. Negative determination. Okay. Wait. No offense. Yes. No, no, there's no. Um, Mike, okay. um, right oh, and then I second it. Are you in the or the subsequent uh, iterations? Um, the, the plans that are yeah, what, are what are the hours of work? What are the hours of work? The name of like all this um, stuff is your mind. Let's do a question. Dave, Dave, you know that yeah. offhand? What's that? Right. Are there so hours of work? You did this. This is yeah. This is us. Work limitations. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Okay. So what, what happens if they get started in our neighborhood? It's uh, 6 a.m. So. <laughs> what happens if they work later than that? Um, if it's someone that's working on their own home or their own property, then they can work later if they want. But if they're hired, they're not supposed to work. I don't think past 7 p.m. That's the person would be able to tell you that is the building inspector. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, Glenn, Glenn Redmond. Call them tomorrow because they're there every night till 8:30 at night, and I live next door. This is going to be signed tonight. All right. I think you should just give Glenn a jingle. Yeah. The guy's a miserable bastard. <laughs> No, actually, Glenn's not a bad guy. Huh? No, I like Glenn. <laughs> I like Glenn. I worked with him before because I put a second floor on my house. <laughs> There's a guy that's the property owner. You should catch him on the way out. Oh, because you know what? The first day I saw him and I said good morning, he turned around and he goes, yeah. Yeah. So, he's not very friendly. Mm. Going in. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Stay away from those. They went from those nuts. Yeah. No, I, I travel to Switzerland for work, and it's like, <laughs> he's on this season, so. Yeah. But uh, it's appreciated. I recognize that's out of the purview of the commission, and I was just curious, especially they have the virals. Something I said. I don't think, you just brought something up that I don't think anyone in the commission ever thought, yeah. thought of. Yeah, that's not I certainly will. Until you've got in the ER with an EpiPen. <laughs> But thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. But it hasn't been me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Something I said. I guess you guys weren't uh, interesting enough. To I know. Know. <laughs> I've been told that many times by many people. <laughs> we have a certificate of compliance for 70-0458, uh, 2005-3835 uh, Tennyson Road. Nastasi? Yes. I know we had a 
I wonder why you're going to visit. recognize me there, Kaja. <laughs> <laughs> we had a mutual friend, Dick Hoyt. Yeah. We did so, and then Ryan, your son, played. Project, I think. Did you also play in the Codges? Can we, uh, guys. The can we keep it to the meeting, yes. guys? Yes. Mike is uh, giving us the site visit. <laughs> Sounds like it was interesting. <laughs> uh, so, my understanding was the this started in 2005. There was a fire at the. the yeah. house that, and uh, as part of the repairs, they built out the deck, built the patio, um, and so now we're here today. They're looking for a closure. Um, it was about as straightforward. I mean, it's been there for ten years now, eleven years now. Twelve years. Twelve years. God. It's been there a while. What's that? It's been yeah. It's, it's been in place a while. Wow. There's no erosion issues. We checked the grass all site. Was, uh, grass is so, coming up. Yeah, coming up really well. Um, Chuck did mention that when he had first gone out to the site, there was some uh, yard waste in the backyard. Yeah. Uh, and we actually took a walk back there. It looks like they made a oh, that's pretty right. large effort to clear a lot of that out. Um, so yeah, that, that was all we found. So it looked 100 percent better. That's right. That's the one I didn't have a plan. Yeah, you were looking at the other I'm plan. still looking at the <laughs> same one. For the same plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve certificate of compliance 270-0458, um, 35 Tennyson Road. I'll second. All those in favor? And he's got that prepared, right? There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank no, you. don't we sign nothing? The fire is finally done. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? You don't? Yeah, Chuck, is there a time period of um, what the CO, what the certificate of compliance takes before they can get a copy, or like, do we? They, you can pick up a copy on Monday. Okay. Um, and then you have to take it to the registry of deeds and have it recorded. Um, At the same time, I can just. At the same time. Oh uh, no! I pick up it. Yeah. And then just call. Yeah, then you can just take it right, right to the registry okay. of deeds yep. and That's have, right, yeah. have it recorded. We do ask for uh, proof that it was recorded, so usually they stamp a barcode on the front page, make a copy of it, and then that's that's what I'd like. I don't need the original, a copy, or something scanned and sent to me. This is all I'm asking for. Okay. Terrific. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Terrific. Thanks. Good luck. Nice take you, Paul. Thank you. You're welcome. I can come and pick it up from you on Monday. I'll come in on Monday. Terrific. Yeah. Thank you. We have another certificate of compliance for 87 Sunnyside Avenue, O'Sullivan. Uh, we did take a site visit, made a site visit. Yeah. Do you want to fill us in? Uh, we made a site visit to 87 Sunnyside Ave, and most of the things that were on there seemed to be in compliance. We had some question about um, the uh, the uh, there was a, a fence question as to where the there was a uh, supposed to be a fence that was to go up um, in the middle of the yard that was didn't appear to be there. There was also uh, we weren't able to locate the uh, infiltration chamber uh, that was mentioned on the certificate of compliance uh, and. The uh, silt sock that was outside the, the fence area um, had not been removed, so we thought felt that the at least the the plastic outer covering of the silt sock be removed before the certificate of compliance was was uh, was granted. So it was the the location of the infiltration chamber, the silt sock uh, exterior be removed, and the contents spread, and then just didn't know. About the fence. There, there was a there was a, also a, um, a gate. They didn't have a, the, plus, one on the side. And they didn't put inside. that in. Yeah. in um, I understand that the fence was originally thought uh, to put that up to keep the dogs out of the pool. Right. So I guess the so dogs didn't get into the So it's going swimming. So just so I, I I was at the site, but I had to leave. 
the infiltration basin, because I know we were talking about this. When you say we don't know the location, you mean like on plan? Right. Okay, so in the as built, we want to request that in the as built plan we have the location. The location, the location and infiltration right. chamber, and that it was put in. So I did call uh, Hayes Engineering gave them the list, they'll, they'll uh, locate the infiltration chamber, put them on the plan, and the owner also gave me a call just after that, and he'll take care of the rest of the items, and um, we'll have them done before the next meeting. So we'll probably be issuing, issuing it at that point. Um, he did say that he thought he ordered the uh, erosion control, uh, it's called the silt sock, um, that had the bio biodegradable mesh, but it, it certainly wasn't biodegradable. No. Uh, he also told me that the fence that was not put up was, um, the thought behind that was that they have new dogs and the dogs would constantly be jumping into the pool, but uh, the dogs aren't doing that, so there's no need for the fence. Uh, the bounds? And the bounds. I don't think the bounds were in, were they? No, they were in. They were yeah. in. They were in. Yeah. yeah. We found the bounds. Found the bounds. And, uh, and, and there was a they pile were in of... Uh, were they located here? Because like, yeah. the, there's one that would have been right in the middle of the grass, right? It was. It was. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm done then. I think you left before we... Yeah. So, um, there was also uh, another pile of slash out in the back, and he said he will take care of removing that. Revisit that in the next meeting. Yeah, that'll be the next meeting. All right, we have some outstanding requests for certificates of compliance at 306 Main Street, Map 11, Lot 20, 226 Simpson. Um, four. Actually, I went to four. I need Chuck to talk about this. <laughs> Can I have uh, 25 minutes on the clock, please? please. I'm going to try to do this really quick. So this, this site has, uh, it actually has three orders of conditions. Only one is still in effect. So the latest one to build out the um, building and do the landscaping, the infiltration. But the owner no longer wants this site. So in order to clean up this project, because we have three orders of conditions, the first one for 27063 is for a renovation at the, um, at the uh, gas station, I believe it was back in the 80s or 90s. Yeah, yeah. I remember wow. that. Yeah. It's the, 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 the Grace Bank of America, just north yeah, of Bank of America on Main Street. It used to be a Citgo, wasn't it? So it goes Bells, across from Bank of America. It was something fact, was like, I don't know what it was. was. I think it was a Citgo, and then it went to like a Global so or something like that. That's it, Glo yes. that's yeah. Global, I remember, yeah. This is the former, uh, former pizza gas station. Proposal. Excuse me? This is the former pizza yeah. proposal. Yeah, the pizza world. Right. So, so, um... I guess for the age of um, 27063, which was just uh, renovations to the gas station, um, I would recommend that we issue that certificate of compliance, but not tonight. This is just a leading up to a question. And then the next one is 270492. Um, that has to do that has to do with the oil spill and the leaking tanks. And after reading through, um, they have a closeout, and after reading through the order of condition, there was a request to do some extensive planning in the back, planting. And there's a planting plan, and this was never taken care of. What year was this? Uh, this was 2006. 2006. Yeah. So it was issued in 2006, um, and the planting plan was, I think, the planting plan came online on 2008. Eight, and it was never done. Okay. So they did the cleanup, and I guess someone else had to take care of the planning, and that that never happened. 
So Brandon brought the property and he assumed all the responsibilities of all three of these orders of conditions, or at least the two ones that were in place when before he got his one to build the building. So he wants to get out from under this. So what I'm recommending is we, at our next meeting, if you give me permission, I will prepare the paperwork to add the planting plan to the latest um, order of condition. And the new owner will be responsible for doing that planting as part of his build out and uh, it will need to be in place before the order of conditions um, is finalized with the certificate of compliance. And once we've done that, Gets registered. Yes. So, so we'll prepare a pay, we'll prepare um, an amended order of conditions, but we're not going the amended route. We're just going to use a plan change and and record a document that um, memorializes these changes. They'll record it at the registry of deeds, and once that happens, we'll uh, close out the first two, leaving only one order of conditions that now incorporates the planning plan in it. So it's unlikely that this happens, but say the new owner comes in and he wants to build exactly what's on that. Or That's exactly what he wants to do. That's exactly what he wants to do. He doesn't want to make any, well, from what I hear from Brandon, he's doing, he's not doing a pizza place. Yeah. But he's but going he's to build the building that plan. the exact he's same doing that plan. plan exactly that we approved. So at that point, what, what happens to that planting plan that we amended into it? Uh, he has to implement it. There's room to do that. Okay. There's still room. So... I guess that's so the the planting plan that's shown on that is not extensive or, or does not it can be done and the project we approved can be done it's in the back half and okay. it's in the 35 and the, it's in the 35 and it's in the 25 and any plants that are in the parking area or that don't work out they'll have to just plant somewhere else or they'll they'll have to uh, you know mitigate for the ones they can't is do. this the one that also had a, a rain garden in front yeah yeah yeah, and it was tight. It was tight, but also when it was Pizza World, wasn't there some discussion about how they were supposed to wow. um, take care of the oil? Now they they're not going to build that, right? What oil? The, the grease. The oh, the grease. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, like a grease pit. Right. Yeah. Do you remember something they like that? Usually grease traps, but. I assume the, the, the hazardous waste and the lots have been reconstituted, right? It's, it, they have a closeout on that site. And was, so there's no. And, and we with spent no a lot of time on reviewing it, that. So. so it's a clean site. It's yeah. closed out. It's, it's very, closed different, out. very different terms. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, yeah. There's different. DP, DP is closed. It's a clean, but it's, yeah. it's closed out. It's, it's it complied with the MCP. Yeah. Is it clean or is it really, really clean? <laughs> well, it's closed. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's yeah. closed. It's <laughs> not really, really just leave it closed. Leave it technical, closed. Technical Doesn't cleanup have to terms. Be clean to be closed. Yeah, that's really, really. Yeah, it took a while to uh, to close it out. So. And then, so I, and then eat a sandwich I, or eat pizza. Um, regarding this property, so I guess I just have a question about, um, um, you know, these orders of conditions were ones that um, Brandon was involved in, and he... He was only involved in one. In one, and it wasn't the one with the planting plan. It wasn't that one. Oh, okay. The planting right. plan one is the one with the oil spill. Okay. The All right. I should say the release, but... So, okay. so, more or less, we're consolidating it into one order of conditions. So that we get both of those items, and we've got two things. Going. I think I, I think the new owner and Brandon, you know, just to get their head around um, the What's oil next? release and the order of condition and the regulations through, you know, you know DEP, they they focus in on that that order of conditions, and if that could go away. Everything else seems understandable, so we, I think it's reasonable to make this change, and we're totally protected. The new owner does not even have to agree to do this because there's an order of conditions on that property 
he assumes all the responsibilities for that order of condition, um, and, he, and he has to get it done. Brandon is the only one that really needs to say yes to this because he still owns the property at this point, and he's going to agree to this change, so he's going to agree to the planting plan. So we're getting everything we need, and it's a lot simpler for everyone in the future to understand. All right. Sounds good. All right, so I will, I will prepare this for the next meeting, which, and at that meeting, we'll, we'll be making this amendment. Once that's recorded, which will happen within the next, those two weeks following that meeting, I'll have two certificates of compliance for these first two, uh, 63 and 492 uh, signed. And because it's a, a well, it's a, we're treating it a minor plan change. Do they have to wait a certain amount of time before? No. No. I just want to record it. That's yeah, all. I just want to make sure that it's needed to be done. No, I think that's the idea. And I don't. I didn't think we were substantially changing the project, so an amendment wasn't needed either. Yeah. So. That's good. Do, so, um, do I want to? I can. I can talk about. 129 Hanscom. So this is the another release that happened at uh, a property on Hanscom Road, the 129. That's right. So I talked to their um, their consultants, and they were looking for some groundwater data. And when I did that, they were waiting for this to come in. It did come in on Monday, and they, um, it, it indicates that the site can be closed out with a permanent solution with no conditions. Great. So uh, very lucky. And uh, so they're, they're going to be backfilling. So the only, for the people that haven't been out there, there was an oil spill. There was a tank in the garage. And the first company that was out there removed the tank, did a lot of cleanup on the garage floor. And they cut a hole through the cement uh, where the tank was. And I think they were doing some tests. Uh, when DEP got there, they, um, I, I think the first company put plastic out, and which concerned me because it was all over the side yard and the backyard, and they didn't want rain to infiltrate through the ground, possibly moving the oil into the stream that was next to it. But DEP came out and they asked for some additional probes to be done just outside the garage door, and those. Um, I don't, know, I don't know what the terminology was, but they didn't find anything. And that's what led us to this fact that it, it can't get closed out um, at this point. So this, this homeowner uh, did pretty well. I have an RTN number if anyone wants to look it up and find out what happens. But for this one here, I don't believe that they need to come into the commission because essentially it, it's, it's all finished. It's done. Everything happened inside the garage. So there's, you know, for us, it's not, there's no disturbance. So um, usually I would ask for at least a report. Um, there, there is a new one down by uh, uh, Track Road on Harvest. It's 14 Harvest, uh, another oil spill. This was in a shed, and this is a little bit different. We will be receiving a um, RDA, possibly a notice of intent for that project because um, they found the oil spill in the, the um, shed, but apparently the line for the house had been leaking for a while. Uh, there wasn't any creeping in towards, you know, sometimes it's, it's, this happened at 306 uh, Main Street also. There seemed to be some barrier, some clay or something like that that prevented it from going towards the stream. And the same thing seems to be happening here. But I've contacted the uh, LSB, who's out of New Hampshire, and he's uh, a nice guy. And uh, we talked about it for a little while. And it sounds like uh, right now, again, he's at that point where he hasn't got any uh, you know, samples back, so he doesn't know what he's looking at. Uh, he'll at least come in and file a um, RDA, a request for determination, and discuss this project with us at this point for what he anticipates he needs to do. And the difference between these two projects is he's digging outside the foundation. He's in the ground already, and there's a mound of dirt. How far away from the wetland? 
the stockpile area is probably five feet from the bank, and uh, the digging is probably 25 feet from the bank, maybe 30, 30 feet. Mm -hmm. So was the oil tank in the shed that fed the, the heating system to the house? The sh you know what? Wait a minute. Yeah, I, I don't know if it fed. The, so the shed. So when you look at the house, you'll see if you go down there. So it's, it has an abandoned, um, uh, abandoned bridge. So you got to go in the right way. But when you look at the house, you'll see a hole next to the house on the left hand side, and that's where the shed was. So there is a shed behind the fence, and that's not the one. That, I don't think that's the one they moved. I think that other one's just gone. And the stockpile area is closer to the to the uh, stream. I guess it was just leaking into the ground through the shed. I don't know what it was feeding. I mean, you might think that it was part of the pool heating system, but I don't know. It could be could be for the house. But yeah, those know. houses down there are slab on grade, right? Because the water table is so high. Yeah. So that was. Uh, it was actually another one too. Oh, it was three in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, but the other one wasn't in uh, our jurisdiction. So we have a bill to approve. Did you want to talk about three carriage lane? Yeah, we went out to three carriage lane. Everyone that, um, that went out there and stayed the whole time gets three or four stars for that. Um, it's 95 degrees. It was pretty hot. Oh. And we for stayed. An hour. Did we stay there for an hour? An hour. After, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> lucky me. So, a couple things happened. Can you go back um, Sorry, what? to the file and put on the very bottom this one? This is a Tom Hughes. This is this is where oh. there are three. One, so you no, one, you're right. You were two, looking at the right three one. Three houses and they clear And the cut. very bottom one. Just click on that. This is Ashley. Oh wait a minute. And one so, of those is carriage. Oh, Tom oh, Hughes it. set up a. So I did find this. So the first thing I, I found the subdivision confirm. plan, which shows ah. the wetland line on it, and so it's carriage lane, yeah. and I think it's. I Mike, think if you, you come towards. All right, now go across the street with that cursor. Keep going across the street. Yeah, you're right there. Oh, it's yeah, it's that one. It's lot ten. This, this that's one, yeah. three carriage, and that's that this one. one. This one. This one. One, two, three. Okay. Right. That's where okay. we are. Oop. Right. All right. Hundred year flood. Yeah. Yeah. There was a hundred year flood. Closer, there's a wetland line in there too. <laughs> Somewhere. It's not easy, but anyways, I did find that. That was one of the things I was asked to do. A buffer zone. What's the limit of buffer zone? That's the 25 foot line. Well, wait, okay, so what year was this? Is. Wait, 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 wait. What year was this? Do you remember? Is there a date? 1986. 1986? Yeah. yeah. They didn't have the 25 and 35 feet. Okay, so buffer just means the BBW. That's, that's, no, that's right on the wetland line. The wetland line are in a 100-foot buffer. There's no 25 or 35 back then. So, so, so this is the 100-foot line. So that's the 100-foot. Yeah. This is the 100-foot line. Right. So are you pointing to this here? Line. This one right here. See? That's, that's the, this one right here. See, that's the contour. No, see, it's the limit of buffer. Right. Limit. Uh, buffer. No, I see it. Yeah. Limits okay. of buffer. Yep. So are the little um, little angles the wetland line? No, it's a thing. Well, so you see flat things here. Yeah. Oh. oh. Okay, now I see. That's a. What's the scale on this thing? Is that 100 feet? One inch equals 40. Who's who? Who did the uh, engineering? Perkins. So there was some uh, clear cutting? Yeah, so what, what happened was um, there was a very optimistic reading of our tree policy and, and there was some 
cutting done when a company was in the in the neighborhood. Just happened to be there. Yeah. So, um, you know, these people understand that this is not what was supposed to happen, and right now they understand they, now or no, no, they're they're absolutely seem very sincere about the mistake that was made. Um, they've all hired Tom Hughes to, to um, create a habitat area and present um, notices of intent for each one of them to uh, kind of make us happy and make them happy also. Notices of intent? How much clearance? A lot. A lot. <laughs> okay. And they went in there with like a snipper on a chipper. That's, yeah. Yeah. I, I think in so, their defense, though, that the, that the grassed area, even before the one in the middle, bef he's there, he's been there for 21 years, but I think the grass was, there was lawn back there. You know, you're looking at... Well, is, wow. That's the one, Mike, you have to go go up a bit. It's the one that's just at the bottom of the screen on the left. No, we're not on that road. There. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you yeah. say up, I'm thinking of the map. So is it just at that property, Three Carriage Lane? No, it's no, three, three Carriage Lane, the one that I just asked Mike to look at, and the one below that. Yeah. Okay. So it's those three properties. This same owner or just no, three, three different owners three different owners so there was there was you know it, there was clear cutting it looked like there was at least 25 to 40 feet of forested area and the lawn was right up to that area and then that was all clear cut right to the edge of the wetland and then the chips were um, probably just dispersed into the low areas. Um, there's a lot of chips, you know, collected in one or two spots. Um, the lawn seemed to be right, right on the 25 foot uh, Z and V line. So right now we're, we went out there to look at the wetland line and how Tom was uh, delineating it, and if we agreed, we actually moved several flags, um, and then Tom said that he's not really finished with his wetland line, and he wanted to check it out again and have us come back. Um, so he's going to come up with a, a plan, because it's, it's hard to, you know, we're not creating a planting plan for these guys. So Tom's going to create a plan, and he's going to, and we're going to evaluate it and go from there. I'm not sure if he'll present um, applications to us, or he might present a plan and ask us what we think. That's has, prob has probably any, what he'll do. Has there been any ground disturbance, any excavation or anything? There was no excavation, no. but when the, the chipper oh, or whatever understand. went back there, I guess it, it mucked up a, a lot. Sense. But what they did was they chipped um, a lot of the biomass right over everything. So it's, you know. So they mulched, yeah. mulched where the trees Yeah, are. they also, on a, in a few areas, they, um, they, what, what is it? What, they ground stumps. They ground yeah. the stumps. Yeah. Okay. Can't believe. So the, the other thing that, not, not, one of those owners said that they wanted to turn that area into lawn. They were just uh, wanted to get rid of the trees because if you look at aerial photos, they're almost right up against the house in some cases. The limbs are near the house and all that. So they're all pretty close. I mean, there are trees that, yeah, that's not what, what the reason was. They were just another tree that they wanted to get rid of. But the trees did get pretty close to the house. So I think Three Carriage Lane is being sold and the new owner wants to put a pool in at some point, but that's not going to be part of this notice of intent from what I hear right now. So, you know, this might take another meeting to get uh, Tom Hughes here to talk about this, but I mean, it, where it sits now is we've, 
we looked once. Um, like to see some habitat, definitely in front of uh, the resource area. And uh, I recommended getting a landscape architect because I thought that type of um, professional would be able to do the best for the homeowners because, hey, something's got to be, you know, they, they need to, we want stuff planted, but, you know, obviously they don't want anything that's going to be a problem in a couple of years. And someone who could really understand what to put in there and how to craft this thing correctly uh, would be great. But uh, we'll see if that happens. Just so you know, the, the, what the, the homeowner in that middle lot had, had pointed out to me that something that I had already seen up in the roof, that there was a, a fair amount of uh, pine needle detritus that would had collected on the roof, which was already at that point starting to uh, deteriorate the roof shingles. And he had pointed out that that was one of the reasons why they wanted the, the trees removed because they were in such close proximity to the house. Mm -hmm. And um, he actually had limbs that he said his landscaper used to have to go up on his deck and use the, the blowing machine to blow the pine needles off and then throw the, the limbs that fell down off the trees would fall on his deck. So that was also a danger. Um, but do we have an idea? It, or is this going to be part of the plan that, well, whether it's Tom or a landscape architect, of the quantity that was removed, or is it just going to be? Sure. Um, so everyone got a bill, <laughs> and it probably has a number of trees on each one. But the, the numbers didn't see. I think the guy in the center took down 20, did they say? That was I 20. Don't. And it was only six on number three. And I don't, And the stumps are still. The stumps at, are still there. The stumps are still. Well, not at number three. Okay. So, not, so we got from the corner, work it down. Number three, number whatever. And then the last house right in the cul de sac. The stumps are still at the last house in the cul de sac. Number three, the center one, it was 15 to 20. And there was about six in, on that one there. So, um, is that is that dark line the uh, the property bound? This one right here. Yeah, and yeah. the one that's south of it. I would say there was probably more trees from number three, Carriage Lane, that were cut down looking at the property bound. Mm -hmm. What is this going through here for this to be the, uh, so it's like what comes back up is, is this a stream or a perennial? <coughs> this is, what? It's a swale well. back there that's wet. I mean, it's, it's a lot of pine, but it is a wetland. Oh, it keeps yeah, on going Yeah, it's definitely hydric so soils. Yeah. Do we know who the tree company was? Yeah, um, I don't know off my head but I know they were from Andover or North Andover and it was white something or other white tree company but I, I made it clear that we wanted to you know talk to them and have their name also yeah, if you look I mean, this, at is uh, this it sounds pretty egregious well the, the you know the the, the, com the comedic side of this is um and I told them all this when they were standing around me, most of them bigger than me, um, that we have a tree policy now, and I think that that tree policy probably would have helped them do a lot of this work without you know, being in the position they are now. Right. They just understood it. Uh, like those six trees on number three, you know, usually, so over two trees, it has to go to the commission. But, you know, the commission can be very reasonable sometimes. And, and, you know, I don't know what you would have come up with, but now we're looking at an enforcement action. So that was pretty much taken away. Well, and I think if they had come before us to talk to us, there would have been a probably more restrictive thought out plan, which meant less tree cutting that they had to pay for. Probably. Yeah. Long Probably. Yeah. Well, it sounds so, like they had a guy with a truck. I, so Say, hey, that's, I have a deal for that's you. what it sounds like. Well, it's always the, butt, the tree um, guy that just pushes it. You know, he's got the they always have right a rule here, of thumbs. Take all those down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
happen. Being, it can happen. And being the resident tree expert, um, and, you know, homeowners not being tree experts, I could see where they would say, oh, you know, it is kind of a hassle to me, you know. He definitely wears two hats, though. He's an expert, plus he's a salesman. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. the one, the, the last one, <laughs> the trees are a ways away. Well, the, the, there's, there's a, like a little isolated wet area, but the, these trees were ginormous, ginormous. Mm -hmm. And they weren't that close. There were some that weren't that close to the house. Yeah. They're pine trees, though, right? Well, well, yeah. yeah. The one that was in the back of the, the last house. Sure most of those on the side. Most of the, no, most of those on the side uh, along that uh, stone wall. I think I could see the sound. Are those are yeah. fine, yeah. I think the one that was right behind the pool was the ginormous one. Wasn't that like a hardwood? Well, there's, there's no culpability on a tree removal company if they have the owner's permission, right? No. I mean, they're, they're, not no. the, they're not the guys of the law in any way. They don't have any responsibility to uphold any. Well, we could find them. Well, if you would know, I guess I guess it's a question poorly posed, but is that can they be held accountable? We have accountable? a policy on our website that says that says not only can we find the homeowner, but we can find the, the tree company oh, too. Okay. And we like to do that. And the reason behind that is because <laughs> they're our ambassadors in a way to get our policies out there. So if they're going around telling everyone, "Look, I'm in the neighborhood. I can do a good job for you," you know, um, right now, and it's not going to be as expensive. I got my truck here now. That's what we don't want because that's when uh, they just sweep through a neighborhood and cause problems. But if they understand, which some co tree companies do, that when they're close to the wetlands, you know, you need to make a, a phone call to the Conservation Commission, then everything works out better. So as our ambassadors, who they don't know that they've been appointed yet, but this company will, just like every other company came in here. We, we, uh, you know, we get the sword out and we tap them on each shoulders and we call them their ambassadors to Conservation Commission and and um, you know, it it should work after a while. I think if they know that a it's you know we're not out to stop them from making money and b it's not a tough process that it will be incorporated into their thought process pretty soon. What's what happened with three hundred and ten South Street? Did you, you and Dave? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Out there and it, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they removed most of the bituminous concrete that was out underneath the silk socks, silt sock, three times fast. It was in the backyard. Um, it done a, a pretty good job at, at doing that. Um, the grass had come in much better than it had been in the previous to that um, in filling it in. Uh, the uh, owner actually was there and said that he had been judiciously, you know, watering it. Uh, and also they agreed to plant in that area where the old garage was to plant uh, a red maple tree in that area uh, where it uh, goes over the, the, uh, their back property line onto the, the town property line. And they agreed to plant that red maple tree in that area. So and they're gonna move a granite pound right. up by the street. They're gonna actually relocate it 25 feet from the wetland flats. Yep. Which, and it doesn't have to be in the lawn. There's a way to have it. Okay. So we'll wait area. until this all this work is finished? This will be on the next meeting. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, and then we have a, a bill, a what, water and sewer bill? Yep. Of uh, $13.14. Do I hear a motion? And make a motion to approve. That's the access to Bear Meadow. For those who don't know, we have to pay for our curb cut. I'll second. Why is a curb cut on the water and sewer bill? They just, that's, that's what they make you do. I don't know, that's what we were explained to us the last time. It's because um, if it was just a path in there and it wasn't a parking area. It's the Bear Meadows parking yeah. lot off South Street. There's one for Matera too, but it's paid for, it was paid for uh, recreation because they uh, kind of ran that place before we, we took it, we had it and then they took it and we got it back. And now facilities is paying that same. I just think it is an odd way. Sewer. It's an odd way to do it. Sewer for the what? Parking for, area? For street runoff. Uh, okay. I 
I've asked that question too. I, 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 I've seen this bill a lot of times, so. I don't know. Yeah, fine. I just find it. I, I would. Do we need to different vote? bill, but. Did Mike approve this? Mike he made Mike a motion. Was. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? I don't know. We're going to pay bills. I would have brought mine. <laughs> this is your approved <laughs> pay. <laughs> I make a motion. Add to it. Um. Um. <laughs> Bare metal, I mean. No emergency permits, no. and we don't have no minutes for approval. Ah, uh, so tomorrow. Do we have a four o'clock me meeting at Argus to go over? Um, so she didn't say anything about the fact that the things that were on the list aren't done? She, so when I talked to Libby Wallace, um, she said that uh, she, she had been out there recently and she thought the vegetated area uh, and the mitigation area had, had grown in quite well but in the back where that, um, the runoff goes into that uh, detention area that was planted, yep. she said that was quite filled, but that always gets that way. And what's in there may not survive, that's what she said. Um, you so talking about where the culvert is or up towards the road? Way around back, remember where the greenhouse is, yeah. was? Like yep. around in the back there. Yeah, so where all the the uh, blueberry bushes are planted on the downslope outside yeah. the fence. Yeah. Are those in good shape or not in good shape? She was, when she was there, she couldn't even get over there. It was filled so much with water. Oh. Um, but they should be able to take a couple weeks of implementation. Where are we in getting the conservation bounds on the neighbor's driveway? I mentioned that also. I don't think you should get into that with them tomorrow. I said it's on that order of conditions. It tells you every 40 feet and on turning points and just do it. So they need, well. What did we ask for, four along the driveway? Well, yeah, I don't know if it's four or if it's three. That's that's just gonna take so much time. Right. Just tell them it's on the order of conditions, it's every 40 feet and on turning points. Um, and so the problem is, is because uh, the neighbors are very territorial. And if you go over there, it's gonna turn into big how many we're going to put in here why do you want them here now if I, I did say if they if the 25 foot line is in the driveway move it back to your property line so that's that's thing and I told them about that other granite pile didn't we I say they out. could use wood po wood posts when we went out there no yeah. no wood posts for granite for this I, th I thought that's what, that's what we typically said I thought when we went out there and this was like in the last sidewalk. No, we, I thought we gave them some sort of alternative to the grand pounds. No, no. I thought we had talked about talked about, but I don't know whether we agreed we upon it. cement pipes. Oh, those don't. Those I, don't. I don't disagree. I thought there was something associated with trying not to create an issue with the neighbors mm. because there was a wood fence back there already. Or uh, doesn't matter if we, if we tell them that then concrete or grand pounds. <laughs> they'll, they'll just pick up some more. There you have them already. Um, and then there was the uh, grading in between the two ponds. Right. And the problem with that is if there's uh, some plants that have grown that are, you know, obligate. Well, that's, that's why they should have done something months ago. Right. No, no, there's a different problem. There's that too. But everything in there has just been planted and it's been raining a lot. So um, if, I mean, it's pretty much a wetland at this point, no matter what, even if it was dry or even if it wasn't at the correct elevation. So the plants that are there may die anyways over time. You know, we don't have this type of year or during the summer. So it's, it's hard to say. So I, was, I emailed Dave, who's going to go there, uh, just to say, yeah, even if there's plants established, it's not something that I feel comfortable about. And I just want to know why there's a mound between the two and you know, I know they shot some elevations and, and the elevations it looked right it just doesn't look right when you're standing next to it so when we were out there and there was there was still water in the lower portion of that pond it was at least 16 to 18 inches different 
in head height between the standing water and that upper portion of the, the, the wetland area. Mm -hmm. So it certainly wasn't the same gradient, not by a long shot. Right. So. So Libby's going to be out there. She's the, she's Hayes's um, top notch environmental scientist, and she'll have uh, an answer. I told her today that you know we'll have a commission member out there to, to discuss this and. Of, Where was, so what happens know, if they understanding don't? Understanding whatever she has to bring up. Um, at this point, they're, they're opened up. They're moving things in. If they didn't, if nothing, if this goes nowhere because it's been just kind of dragging along, they stop. Do they just not get a certificate of compliance? What's the? And we no, just sit here and ten or, years later we approve no, a certificate of compliance. Land. That's when it gets very exciting, and we get to put on a different cap, which is hard at, because we have twenty thousand dollars to okay. correct these problems. Right. So we have a bond. You've got this. the bond. Right. How often would the culvert from across the street? Did they ever figure That's going to be talked about also, but I have the engineering uh, department going there to talk about that. Okay. So we don't, other than pointing out where it was. Did you ever see that? No. Um, the, the second stream over by the parking lot just before it turns the corner um, stream, the second pond, uh, where, the, where the mitigation area is, is, if you just look into that, it's to the left just before it turns the corner. So it's over by the parking lot. That whole bank blew out maybe half a truckload of dirt got there in the morning, it was all gone, it was all eroded, it was a major release of whatever. Like it was undermined by water and everything just fell in. Is, it, is this a, where the snow dump it, is? By, by the storm, by the uh, pond. So down the hill, down yeah. over, the, over the edge. So we lost about five feet of the flat area and Is about, it like a cherry tree there or something? No. No, it's on the further other side. down. Further yeah. down to the to the parking lot. the building? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, they the town the town engineers think that there's been some backup of water from across the street. The neighbors been complaining, and they left this open for two years, and never discovered why it happened. Then they just rebuilt the bank and closed it up. You know, engineering tells me across the street's been flooding out, and they want to check into it. So they're going to be there too. And so is uh, Jamie Lynch's company and Delbert Construction and uh, obviously the, the site manager for uh, artists. And so we'd, we'd want that resolved before we issue That us. has nothing to do with us, but, but the bond, you know, we can hold that bond for bank repair. Mm -hmm. So for that, we could hold a bit of that money but not to fix the pipe. That's not our problem. But isn't it the problem that the water from across the street isn't able to travel to the wetland because they blocked up the pipe? Well, I, you know, I checked it a lot uh, last year, and, and it looked very similar to what's happened as the construction was going on. Those ponds dry out, yeah. and there's like eight inches to a foot you know, bank in the mid midsummer, you know, a month from now, there's not going to be much there yeah. as far as water. So, I, I don't know what they're going to find. I'm not sure that it was feeding too much. And also, the way the ponds are shaped, that one by the road is why is it close to the road? Probably because there's a connection right there. I would assume the connection's at the point of that pond, that's that first pond, that that's sense. up by the road. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it would come in this way, and then how does it get up and over, you know, what was there in the first place, which was land. Something had to fill that first one. Yeah. So, but so I'm still confused. The, the, I'm sorry. I don't know. Well, we don't have the information in engineering's looking into it. Either. Right. My only concern is I don't want, I know it's their just jurisdiction, but isn't it ours that water isn't able to travel from one site to another because of excavation on a site within our jurisdiction? Well, we certainly want this solved. Right. I mean, that's 
it's on my list. I sent the list, I sent you the list, I sent everyone the list. Um, I, I didn't send the commission list. I mean, everybody who's going to the site visit has a list and it says to solve this problem. Okay, all right, so, that was my only question. All right, thank It you. is part of our list. Okay, all right. But, we but when push comes to shove, we should we use that money to fix it. Oh, no, I, oh, oh I agree that. Until they've, oh, absolutely. Until they've solved us. Absolutely. I don't, Otherwise we, it's so when push comes to shove, we can't use the money to no, fix it. No, I wasn't it, even thinking that. I, I just want to make sure that, that that thing was going to get fixed. That money is to plant, to yeah. make sure we have a hydraulic connection. I mean, they're going to fix it. Erosion control, things like that, yeah. get the site stable. Okay. Is the erosion control in the lower bank outside the fence behind the building where the, is that where the erosion control is or is it erosion control also in the edges of the pond? There's erosion control all over the pond because if, when they first did the site, they just put it around the ponds and then when they started doing the build out, they didn't take that down and they, they put it further out. So there was okay. like two tiers of that. I, I told Libby to take all that out of there now. And I, I think most of it's gone anyways. Oh. The saga so that, yeah, that's a, and not one call from artists. Not one call. I thought they would be, yeah. They would want the certificate of compliance, but no, nothing. Saturday, June 17, 2017, 1030 to 3, the 14th annual Reading Lions Club Reading Friends and Family Day. Who signed up for that? Did we discuss that at a previous meeting? No. Mm -hmm. We did? Yeah. I don't think we, we did. Think, we did some preliminary. We so you have 10 to 130. Yeah. And Dave was going to show up at 1.30 to 2 to help you help. He's pulling your leg. I'm not, I'm, uh, well, D already told well, me Based on the amount of people it, so. we have going, I think we need to rely on, uh, you know, the our anchor. Um, yeah, no, not after last year. <laughs> so we used to have a, a box of stuff posters, the sign, the Reading Conservation sign. Well, before we even do that, we need to figure out who's going because there's the, we have We've got some issues here. Yeah. So who Short is available? People. Yeah, who's available? Mike's? Mike's is no, I could be there 10, 30, 10 to 130. And how about two? Probably not. Three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Probably not. lunch. Be there to set up. Send somebody for lunch. Wait, let me check the weather. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They've, they've, they've got, they want um, organizations starting through A through Q to arrive between 8.30 and 9.15 to set up, and then between Q, R, and Z arrive 9.15 to 10. So we're on the early shift to set up. But yeah, I, I think I they're talking about sooner than 10. Like, like Home Depot goes, and they have like, 12 people and boxes and boxes and boxes. We have two boxes and the table and the, and the tent will be set up for us. Yeah, the biggest issue really. It's a turtle. <laughs> we do the turtle this year. Please don't. Um, I know you don't like it. Um, <laughs> I mean, the biggest issue is, is usually the weather um, or things just blowing off the table. <laughs> you know, it gets Are windy you like through when there. Al was supposed to help me last year and there's so a thunderstorm. Usually. We usually Lightning. go through a ton of tape and, yeah, try to tape things down Bring and rocks. Bring some rocks and from the yard. Rocks and stuff to weigh everything down. Are we going to do the um, free drawing for time Matera. at Matera? Could. Has anyone we don't have a budget, so I think <laughs> doing something. Have people used yeah. the Matera time? Yeah, they we used it for a Girl Scout meeting. Remember? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't. You know, I don't know if that, you were there. I don't know if they, they received it, but I don't remember. The music? Anyone asking me about 
this. Cashing in their coupon. Yeah, I don't think it was. Well, if they yeah. cash it in, that's on them. If they They're don't, it's on them. We can until offer. They get an entire week, right? And they can vacation. Stay there. I think we did put an expiration on it. I think we did put a one year. We did. I don't think. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, we did because I drawn up the. I remember drawing up the certificate. So we, we could do. About it. We could do that again, um, and that would be easy. I think that's, I mean, that's sharing a public resource that we have. We don't have a huge, you know, fund to. I, I think it just gets the word, even just gets the word out about Kara. Right. Right. That's yeah. there. Uh, and I'm going to the cabin tomorrow because um, there's an event there. There's a birthday that my kid's invited to. So some people are using it. That's good. Um, so I think some people show up, though, and they say, oh, uh, time for what? Oh, we can use that place? So. Yeah. yeah, so I, I think we just need to decide how long, like an hour, two hours, because I think it's rented by the hour, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so. Two hours. Yeah, two hours is nice. Good. Two hours at Matera? It's time to clean up and set okay. up. Okay, I, st I still have like the little okay. slips. And Three stuff. would be nice. So get time to set up, time to clean up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, three hours is not a long time to set up, clean up, and get Gosh, out. I would say what are we, what are, what's it something be used that's worth, hours? worth a bit. I, I yeah. think four hours. We don't usually do two okay. in the same day, and it's not no sweat off our back what, to think, have it open and then shut. I mean, the same process happens for two hours. It happens right. for four. Yep. I mean, I think most people, most people do rent it for two, but... The secret to that is, is we let them go in there on our time to set up and clean up on our time. Yeah. So the two hours is probably more like three. Okay. So I mean, I mean, it, yeah, I think good. four is fine. Three. More than that. Yeah. It's, four is good. Okay. We have Anika. So what time do we need to? What time? I have to go to a, a service in, in Maine for a the death of a friend's mother. Um, I, I can't remember. I think it's at two. What, what time do we have to start? I might be able to get there early, I'm set up and. It would be great this, if you were there. If um, the soonest I could be at the field, absolute soonest I could be it's, at the field. It's ten thirty to three. Yeah, um, but could, your setup so is I could actually help set up. Right, yeah. right. At eight thirty. I can help set up at 8.30. 8.30? I can set up at 8.30, I think. So why don't okay, you so and Mike Harry and set up at 8.30, and then, Anika, you can... I'll uh, show up at 10. 10.30 or 10, whatever. And sure. Okay. So 8.30 until when? As long as we can? We'll just set up, and you can just leave. You know? yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty quiet in there. They're morning. just trying to not to have all these you cars. Say, right. They want, when people are starting to show up, they don't want everybody like drive, trying yeah. to drive up and set things. Right, and this, so, so are we now what are you going to bring? Yeah. Um, I can grab. Someone can has to come to the books. office and grab the box tomorrow. I can, I can do that. Oh, no, I can't. I can do that. Yep, the box has to be picked up tomorrow. Absolutely. Can I? We can drop it off at my house if that works. Yes. I can drive it to somebody's house. Can we do that? Also. Okay. You have the door open, food and fridge. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, some cold buns on the board. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Probably got better food than I do. It's junk. Tomorrow's supposed to be nice out, right? Uh, yes. It's got more nice cable day. channels than I do. So, if you could, just, just to the right of the garage, there's a set of steps. Mm -hmm. Just put it right there. Okay, so that's going to include the banner. For four and any spare posters. I'll, I'll try to get everything we have that would be great. I don't think the box gets unpacked, so. No, it doesn't. <laughs> just grab the People box. just rummage, rummage through it. Yeah. Is there anything like tools or anything I need, like a screwdriver or zip ties no, to hang the no, banner? No, no, no. It's just tape. 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 There might be some tape, tape in the box. I'll bring, I'll bring like pens and, you know, the stuff that's needed for the Matera cabin sign up. Okay. Um, raffle. So I'll do the raffle stuff. Um, is there anything else we're gonna? Well, you need more people too. You need you yep. need to fill in that. Yep. I mean, last year we brought um, we brought those invasive plants mm -hmm. as examples to show people, and they it was great. Gradually over the day, they wilted in the sun, and they um, 
you know, just to show people. And then we had the, the brochure from from the teen Envirathon, I think. You know the Envirathon yep. kids made that brochure and stuff like that. So that was do we have anything that a group has done? We didn't we weren't approached by the Envirathon. No, this they year. were doing different. Where did I see the garlic mustard? Sorry, have you are you looking for invasive examples? I don't know. It could just be Is the standard, it? same old conservation oh, table. Or sunny side, just outside the fence. Oh, we yeah, should I have ripped up all of mine. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for, we're looking for um, associate members and possibly a, a member. Okay. So. Okay. Although I have a line on someone who might be a great member. Uh, he seems interested. He's a he's a landscape architect. Oh, great! Did you find out where? No. Would you, would you say where? Yeah. What does that mean? Where what? Where does he work? Oh, where does he work? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't know. Okay. So. It's always the question. It'll just be like a standard conservation table, not with a. Uh, we're not gonna pick a theme like uh, filling your backyard with yard waste. And <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know. <laughs> We have just like leaves. I shouldn't be so negative, but <laughs> stream no. file. You know, well, I don't know. Pick a theme. About, pick a hey a reminder. You know policy. or what? How about we advertise our tree policy? Oh, should we do that? Get some copies of that. Is that a oh that's a good idea or is that a oh let's avoid that conflict or it was an what is that oh with what happened on uh, three carriage lane? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. We and then we, we have positive. another problem with the tree policy. One is that, you know, we're taking down a lot of habitat and we're putting a three-inch caliper tree in. So right. I'd like a couple of things to be solved. I think we wanted to go a year. I know Dave wants to talk about that, but um, we thought we were the doing good policy. and you think it's doing more harm. People no, no, I, I don't. No, I don't. I, no yeah. what, we're, what we want to do is we want to let it live on its own. And... And if they qualify, then there's nothing to for the commission to look at. But is it? I don't know if it, I know it's not ready for that point right now. But um, and I think that we have to do this habitat thing. So what do you mean do this habitat thing? Well, a 24-inch oak tree is not the equivalent habitat. Right. I mean, in 30 years it would be. So um, there's been there's been some, uh, you know, just to, to try to get that closer. But we're not, you know, I'm not going to get into it tonight because I know Dave has done some research on it. Okay. And uh, he might have something to say, but it would be better to be prepared uh, to open that up again and talk about okay. it. I think you're right. And so you don't want to promote the policy? Why? I'm just curious. I don't think it's think really ready for prime time. Because I think the people at Three Carriage Road read the policy and thought that they gave them carte blanche to cut down all the trees in the backyard. Did they really review it? Um, no, I think they heard about it. And uh, maybe they reviewed it, but one of their sons is a lawyer and he reviewed it and he said that it gives them carte blanche to cut down anything. <laughs> so, so, so the guy that I talked to talks. said that he, he wasn't aware of it until after the fact. He said he had no idea about it, and then he said the, 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 he told me that the tree person that was actually cutting down the trees said that you could be <laughs> seventy feet away from the house. What's wrong with this thing? Hey, let me ask. Let me ask. Let me think about this differently. So, how long have we had the tree policy in place? Since November. So, so six months. How many? How many people have come to us under that policy? Just about every applicant since we passed it. Yeah, a lot. And we had one really good one. This was at last meeting. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. I, done by Sam Bourne. I can't remember which one, but they did a good job on, on yeah. reading the policy and figuring out what they would. It was down there, Hanscom, whatever that next street over from Hanscom. Bancroft. Bancroft, oh yeah. Well, I have to assume the policy is not as ambiguous as this attorney found it to be in his favor. 
So we don't think so. Why don't you well, read it, Liz? Well, I haven't, I, I haven't memorized it. I've, I've, I've skimmed through it, but I would yeah. defer to you to just, or to, to say like, yeah, okay, well, this is the policy, but it's easily followed, and it's to your advantage to try to adhere to the policy than to have to deal with this after the fact. So. And how do you how do you encourage people to at least well, no. embrace the fact that the policy is not their enemy? I guess it's promoting the policy for the benefit of the right. homeowner, not just to say this. You know, is, is it a punitive or tutorial document kind of thing? Obviously, it's there to help people. It's not there to hurt people. But if you don't follow it, but it comes well, down to awareness. The problem is, is yeah, that the, the general home, homeowner and the the tree companies are really not not aware of it. So. What I, what I would feel more comfortable about is if, and I'm not sure it's in there, uh, because every time someone calls, I have to pick it up and read it again. But if it said that, you know, your first step is to, you know, talk to Chuck, put, put the list together. But at some point, you have to call the conservation commission right. and verify what you're doing before you do any. You know, you take action. I thought that was like our big thing when we did it was like, no, we don't want anything where they're not at least coming and talking to you. I right, Al and I actually tried to write something that allowed them to do things on their own. Yeah, and we, we specifically said, said, we said no, no, we, we want them know. coming in and having the conversation. Like I said, the, 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 the attorney that uh, was the son of one of the guys at Three Carriage Lane, and I, I guess... You know, I, he, I don't was, understand how he that was drawn would... back. I think it had to do with the hazardous tree policy part of it, where that didn't seem to be wide open, and it allowed more than what we expected. I, For a hazardous tree, they have to come in and present a letter from an arborist. This is no, why. You, this that, is why he doesn't no. want to open this up. No. Yeah, see, we no, need it in front of us so. and, and all that. Yeah. I mean, you can. I mean, go ahead and you know talk about it. But if, but you know, you look at it at the same time and try to figure out why why yeah. it was gone. It went so wrong I over mean, at at uh, Carey's Lane. I mean, it seems pretty obvious that, to me anyway that any attorney can read any document and find in it what he wants to suit their own. Need so I it's agree. the fact that this attorney said, Yeah, it gives you cash once doesn't mean anything. I mean, <laughs> it'd be an entertainment yeah, that means zero. I actually agree with that. Yeah, I mean, okay, that's it's, they'll argue that ice cubes are boiling, so yeah. So. Okay, we got off the subject. So, who's going to be there from 1 30 to 3? Hmm. Anybody? I could abandon it. I can't make it. any promises that I will be there. I will try to get there. <laughs> um, based on some other, I'm supposed to be at the Rotary booth there as well, and uh, we are not having a Reading softball little league booth there, near as I can tell. But I do have sons that are in playoff games on Saturday, so I got to kind of juggle that too. It's only an hour and a half. The games are two hours. Yeah. You talk about it's only an hour and a half. The, the stint at the booth. Yeah. You know, their, their games are at like 10 and 12 or 10 and 1 o'clock or something. Uh, it's okay. like, so one's at Hunt, one's at Majors. And I just, oh, yeah. it's been on this year, the softball league, it's been tough. To, uh, yeah. I can't not watch my kids play baseball. I, hear you. I have to agree with that. Yeah. This is the, what you say, championship game? Playoffs? Yeah, it's, it's playoffs. So. Kids remember that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's important. Dad does. Not so. Yeah, it's. <laughs> And they all, it's nice if my kids want me to coach. That's who I'm going to be with. The young Dirks want to coach their I, kids. I don't know why you'd say. So that, that's what, yeah. that's why we brought this up in the first place because, you know, I, I think that when I was reviewing the um, agenda with Becky, we realized that no one's available to do Friends and, Friends and Family Day, you know. Well, I'll take a look at my afternoon commitment on Saturday and see if I can stay till 3. But if you can't, that would be right the right. whole day. That's, that's, I will be a. That's too long. I will I mean, not if you can't, be. We have to just abandon the afternoon. The <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's a long great enough that you're doing it like, as long as you are. So, you know. But I guess I could close it to close it up and put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
this is where the turtle comes in. The handy. doctor is out. Yeah. The turtle can manage. I could lend you our pet bird. He's, name he's from turtle. Chile, but <laughs> he's an invasive species. Aww. No, no. Look, well, it'll, it'll be covered, you know. I can... Well, if anybody, uh, if anybody thinks they could do 133, <laughs> I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Absolutely. All right. So we'll just I leave it at that. Not uh, send the email to abandon. Our, I was going to have them not well, set up our, look, our tent. Um, and oh, no, set up the tent. And if they have one of those, um, on like an awning, like a, yeah, set up the tent. Awning. Set up the tent and the, and the table. All right. And I'll bring my, I'll bring my lawn chair. It'll be fine. You might want to bring It'll be fine. Chair's lounge. <laughs> Your fault. I'll bring my camping mat. All right. That would be cool. What if I downloaded some, you know, earthy, new age music and just That's played great. it? Yeah. You know, bird you, songs. You could just replay some of our commission meetings on an iPad. Like people could just stop and watch. <laughs> well, that's the easiest way to get this thing abandoned in the afternoon. Definitely. I would pick the joking moments if I could. Just take all the, take was, all the meetings was, that Al's at. I was recognized at the library from the librarian. Oh, yeah, I went up to the information and said, you're the conservation commission. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, here it comes. <laughs> no, that's my yep, twin yep. sister. <laughs> no. Is that it? It'll be Did good. Did make a motion to adjourn? I would second that. All those in favor? Oh, okay. So this is... Whoa, it's not even 9 o'clock.